G'day everybody. This is a video explaining the location of Atlantis and I'm doing this so when I talk about Atlantis in other videos such as refugees from Atlantis etc in future videos so that we're all clear what I'm talking about because there are many aspects of the Atlantis legend and there is so much which has contributed to this legend and I want to just explain my take on this, you might have a different take on this, that's fine, but this is interesting. Now, looking here, we have a Roman map. This is Ptolemy's map of the world. And essentially, he was around after 120 AD. 120. So, this is the map of the world in late Roman times. Okay. Earlier Romans did not use this map, they would have used their own maps, Greek maps. We see Britain, we see Spain, we see Europe quite well delineated. And this map survived until the Middle Ages as, as the best map of the world. And let's go back in time. This is also a, a, another version of Ptolemy's map. It's, it's a little bit uh, different, but it's pretty much the same. It's pretty much the same thing, a bit harder to read. And we're going back in time to... Eratosthenes, and looking at this map, this is 200 BC, and it's much smaller. And it seems he has Europe, Libya, Asia. So we're getting back to the world in which certain things are important, such as Pillar of Hercules. In the Atlantis story, they say Atlantis was bigger than... Asia and Libya put together. Libya seems to have been the Greek word for Africa, Africa being the Roman word for the, the province around Carthage. Now, if they're talking about something as big as that, I would imagine they're talking about America, and they're confusing America with the Atlantis legend, something beyond the Pillars of Hercules, because a legend is, is, is just a legend, it's a story. And as it gets told, certain things get added to it. Now, if we're talking strictly about an island beyond the Pillars of Hercules, over here, one thing is apparent. There's no room on the map to draw it. And that could be a problem if you're trying to describe the location of Atlantis. It could be a big problem. This is pretty much the same thing. Basically... Alexander would have used a map similar to this in his time. And he would have said, okay, all I have to do is take over up to here. I can, I can view, I can see the end of the world. I can see what it looks like. That's why he was so disappointed. He got to about, you know, a quarter of the way into India and, and he had to turn around before he could see the end of the world. So he sailed back and he was a conqueror of the world because he had all this, which is basically... All, all the richest lands. And this is Strabo. Strabo was a great traveller and he did go to Britain in ancient times and that's why Britain is on the map, Britannia. Ireland seems to be Eon. And we're going back in time. This is a map that Herodotus... This is sort of Herodotus's view of Europe. So, what's going on here? Now, as you can see, it's pretty much the same as the last map. It's showing the world as circular, and the further we go back in time towards the Greek Dark Ages, the more, the more round it becomes, uh, with a great ocean around the map. And as you can see, no Britain. I, I think this whole area is Atlantis, the, the Britain area. Instead, it, it sort of sticks out a bit. And the Northerners, Hyperboreans, Scythians, Africa is drawn quite small. And this is sort of Plato's time. 500 BC, classical Greece. Before I was showing you Rome, Hellenistic Greece, and now classical Greece. This is the view they had. And as you can see, Greece dominates everything. It's at the center of the world, basically. And I suppose this is why Alexander had so much confidence, you know, in these old maps, 
in general, there's not too much to the east, so he could have thought, okay, I can easily take over all this area. But if you look at it, what's going on here is, this is the time of Plato. Plato recorded the legend of Solon. Solon, an Athenian statesman, visited a priest in Egypt, who may have been called, I think it was Son Sonkis, according to the later historian Plutarch, visited Egypt. There would have been Greek colonies in Egypt, in the Delta, lots of Greek people living there. And they told him the story of Atlantis in about this time. And this is what the world looked like when the story was recorded. So when they talked about an island in the Atlantic, you will observe there is no Britain. They didn't know about Britain yet. They were just coming out of a dark age. So, is Britain Atlantis? Now, you can say, oh, maybe not, maybe yes. Look, I'm going to prove it. It's fine. I'll prove it. As for the Pillars of Hercules, if you talk about an island in front of the Pillars of Hercules, what you are suggesting is there is an island here in the ocean. And the ocean stretches all the way around. Okay? It goes right around. So it can be basically anywhere here. Atlantis is not drawn on this map. There is actually no room for it anywhere. Okay. Pretty much the same. And this is the world during, or just coming out of the last ice age. So, Sunderland in Asia. This one's called Sahul. And perhaps that's Mu. Over here, look at that. There is a huge amount of land which has been lost in the Atlantic Ocean right there. A massive amount of land. Now, we're going to get a bit closer to concentrate on Europe. That's the world again. We're going to concentrate on this. And basically, Atlantis can be anything you want it to be because so much contributed to this legend. Now, they talk about Crete. Crete has a few red splotches there. This is... Now, I thought this map was exclusively about the last ice age. But actually, this is after the Ice Age, just after the Ice Age. It's, we're coming out of the Ice Age, this is about 10,000 years ago. And it actually took a long time for the sea levels to rise, several thousands of years. So even when temperatures were warm, the land still looked a bit like this. Even though the glaciers were gone, melted. Now, yep, there's something in the Adriatic, something's going on there. Look, any one of these islands, you, you pick wherever you want Atlantis to be. It, it, can, it can even be uh, uh, the Greek islands. There, there's a theory that the Black Sea Flood, 5000 BC, this turned into, this was a freshwater lake, it turned into a saltwater sea. And uh, the, the, the Dardanelles were opened up as, this, as the Mediterranean rose, as the sea level rose. That's, that's a good theory. Yeah, that, that, that can be, an, uh, that, that could be Noah's, that could be Noah's flood, essentially. That, 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 is suggested uh, in a book called Noah's Flood that that is, you know, what Noah's Ark was about. But look, it can be anywhere. It can be Sardinia, it can be Sicily, it can be Malta. All these ancient civilizations lost land. But the big one that lost land is this. And over here, that's not a very good map. Doggerland, there are sites under the North Sea which Archaeological sites, campsites, which are quite interesting. This whole area has lost land. And if you look at the composition of the people who live here today, there are a lot of redheads in Ireland. Britain as well. Britain is 14% redheaded. And these are, redheads are, of course, the gingers, the ginger mummies, which are found all over the world as refugees from this situation, losing land, deciding to move. Deciding to move across Asia, move across, move to America, move to Egypt. There were redheads in Egypt. They talked about by Plutarch. Is this Atlantis? This is what I'm going to talk about when I talk about Atlantis, the, an island in the Atlantic, which was a pathway to other island, uh, via other islands to the opposite continent. So you would go from here, Iceland, Greenland, Newfoundland, America. That's how you would go, and that, that's what Plato talks about. And you might think, oh, well, that's a little cold, but look, I, I told you, I'm, you know, I'm going to prove this, prove everything, right? Let's, let's prove it. 
these are Holocene temperature variations, and many of these temperature... The Holocene is the last 10,000 years. The, the Pleistocene was the Ice Age. The present day temperature is about... Maybe it's about there. This is an older chart. Essentially, many of these charts stem from, I think, Greenland ice core temperatures. And if you look at this, uh, Greenland was a lot warmer in the past. That whole region was warmer even than it is today, and we are moving into this warmer period. For much of the 20th century, which is about here, Greenland was quite cold. Now it's starting to warm up. They're even starting to grow, grow crops there, and they did grow crops in medieval times when temperatures were warmer. 10,000 years ago, temperatures got very warm, and there was plenty of opportunity in Britain for the past 10,000 years before present, to build a civilization. It would have been a, a very interesting place. Again, this is a this is a chart up to the year 2000. I think it's mainly based on Greenland temperature, uh, ice core readings. They check how much CO2 is in the ice and, and they base their guesses of the temperature upon that. But as you see, Roman warming, Minoan warming, medieval warming, the Little Ice Age was basically 400 years ago uh, until about the 20th century. That's when Greenland got very cold. There was plenty of opportunity for a thriving civilization in Britain and they are just discovering things like this, a huge henge in Britain. You know, that's amazing. Again, Doggerland. I think the whole area, it could be Doggerland, UK, Ireland, the whole thing is a relic of a sunken land. There we go. Okay, thanks very much.